Okay. Hey guys, it's Miss Adelini. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about um, how nerve cells maintain what's called a resting potential, which is their normal charge across their membrane, the charge of the outside versus the charge of the inside of the nerve cell. So this right here is showing you the outside of a nerve cell compared to its inside. On the top, we have the extracellular fluid, extra meaning outside. And then below, we have the cytoplasm of the nerve cell. And this is going to be the plasma or cell membrane of the nerve cell. Note that we can see the phospholipid bilayer. This right here is what's called a voltage meter or a voltmeter, and it shows a reference electrode on the outside with another electrode stuck on the inside of the nerve cell. And it's just going to measure the difference between the extracellular fluid and the cytoplasm. So it looks like in terms of charge, the inside of the cell is at negative 70 millivolts compared to the outside. So it has a more negative voltage than the outside of the cell. Okay. So what we see in this image is um, we've got this blue protein transporting sodium ions out of the nerve cell and potassium ions K plus into the nerve cell. This is what's known as the sodium potassium pump and it is going to help maintain this negative 70 millivolts by transporting Na plus out and K plus in. For every three Na plus it transports out, it only transports two K plus in. So we end up with more positive charge leaving the cell than entering the cell. Hence, the inside of the cell is going to be more negative. Okay. Notice that when the cell is at rest, we have a lot of Na plus on the outside versus only a little Na plus on the inside. And we seem to have more K plus on the inside compared to K plus on the outside. We also have a lot of negatively charged proteins on the inside of the cell, which is another reason why the inside is negatively charged. In our image, we also have a potassium channel, which is normally closed unless the cell is sending a signal. Same with a sodium channel, which is also normally closed. Now, some of our potassium channels are leaky, meaning they're not totally closed, so they will allow some potassium to exit the cell by accident. But our sodium potassium pump is still going to pump more K plus in than exits through the leaky potassium channel. So we're still going to have more K plus on the inside of the cell. Okay. Now on your paper, whoops, this is going to be right after the section on the reflex loops. We're going to draw a nerve cell at rest. So I want you to draw the axon of your nerve cell as two horizontal lines and above that axon is going to be the outside of the cell, same with below that axon. Notice that I've indicated the inside of the cell is negative compared to the outside, which is positive on the right hand side here. So I'm just giving the relative charges of the outside and the inside of the cell. I wrote high P minus here to indicate that we have a lot of negatively charged proteins inside the cell compared to a low amount of negatively charged proteins outside the cell. I also showed my sodium potassium pump pumping 3 Na plus out for every 2 K plus it pumps in. And I showed that we have, as a result, high Na plus and low K plus outside compared to low Na plus and high K plus inside. I did show this leaky potassium channel, this K plus channel, that says it's always open just because it is leaky, and it's going to allow some K plus to exit the cell, but still not enough to overcome the K plus that's being transported in by the sodium potassium pump. So note on my little key, I show that this is a K plus channel and that this little circular guy is a sodium potassium pump. Okay. And I think that is it for resting membrane potential.
In the next video, we are going to talk about the action potential, which is when a signal gets sent along a nerve cell.